Hey, what's up? This is Caleb Ward with Rocketstock.com, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this cool Star Wars inspired light speed jump. Before we get going, I want to encourage you to go download the free project file over at Rocketstock.com. Okay, cool. So this technique is actually broken up into three different main compositions. We have our light speed jump composition, which is basically these stars that kind of push away. And then we also have our warp comp, which kind of creates this warped tunnel that you can see in the new Star Wars movies. And then we have our final comp, which has the light speed jump, it has the warp comp, and then an adjustment layer to kind of help smooth out the transition. And I'm going to show you how to use a video asset to kind of smooth out this transition even more. So let's hop in. So I'm actually going to go ahead and delete all of our assets except for our Radium HD title background, but we'll get to that later. And I'm just going to drag them all down to our little trash can here and hit delete. So now first things first, let's create a new composition. So go to composition, new composition and we'll make it 1920 by 1080 and let's change it to 24 frames per second so it's cinematic and we'll keep the duration at 10 seconds and let's name this light jump and hit OK. So let's create a new solid and I'll hit command Y or control Y on a PC we'll call this noise and change it to white hit OK and OK. So go to your effects browser and type in fractal noise and drop it onto the layer. And we're actually going to turn down the contrast just a little bit to right about there. And then go over here to your effects browser and type in tritone and drop it onto the layer. So let's change the midtones to just a middle of the road blue about right there. And the highlights will change to just kind of a brighter blue about like that and hit OK. So now hit T for opacity and drop down the opacity to where the noise is just barely seen in our composition. So I have it at 10%. So now let's create another new solid. So go to layer new solid and we'll call this one stars and hit OK. And go to your effects browser and type in CC starburst and drop it onto your layer. So right off the bat you'll see we have speed set to 1. Let's go ahead and set that to 0. And this is just going to make it to where the stars are just kind of still in the sky here. And I'm actually going to turn down the size to about 40. And let's set a keyframe at 0 seconds here for the phase. And go ahead and move forward to about 1 second and we'll say 19 frames. And we're going to turn up this phase to about negative 1, negative 180. So basically this phase is going to spin one full rotation and then one more half rotation. So now if we scrub through here we can see the stars just kind of push back in space. So go ahead and hit U and that's going to pop up all of your active keyframes. Select the last keyframe and go to your graph editor. So go ahead and grab the first keyframe here, drag it to the bottom and just kind of create a hill like this. So now it's going to slowly push these stars back and then they're going to very quickly push away. Go ahead and deselect your graph editor and let's set a keyframe at about, let's say 16 frames for the size and then move forward to the very end here to our last keyframe at 1 second and 19 frames and turn up the size to 100. So now the stars get bigger as they push back into space. And one more thing, let's go ahead and set a keyframe for the speed at 1 second 14 frames, move forward 1 frame and change the speed to negative 2.3 and click away. So now if we take a look here we have our stars they slowly push back in time the stars get bigger and then it just automatically animates forever. Cool. So now let's go to our effects browser type in echo and drop it into our layer. So echo is fantastic because it duplicates any elements in your scene so I'm actually going to change this echo time to 0 0.001 click away and then I'm going to change the number of echoes to 50 and click away excellent so now you can see we're getting these really cool star trails so if you scrub to the beginning here you can see the stars are still and then over time they begin to separate and kind of push backwards in space 
until it gets out of control at about the 1 second and 14 frame mark. So let's go ahead and stylize this. So go to your effects browser and type in glow and drop it onto the layer. And we're going to go over here to our threshold and type in 15. And for the radius, we're going to set it to 25. And the intensity, we're going to set to 2. And go to the original colors, select AB colors, and we're going to select just a light blue, about like that. Hit OK. And then we're going to go to our color B and select just a middle of the road blue. So about like this. And hit OK. So now if we scrub to the beginning, you can see the stars have just a slight glow to them, but as you kind of progress in time and as these trails get longer and longer, the glow becomes more intense. And that's exactly what we want. And go to your effects browser one more time and drop on one more glow effect. And this glow effect is actually going to serve as our transition tool to go between the two compositions. So I'm going to set a keyframe for the intensity and the threshold at one second and four frames and I'm going to turn the intensity down to zero. And go ahead and scrub forward to about the 1 second and 14 frame mark, and we're going to turn up the glow intensity to 1, and turn up the threshold to about, let's say, 10. So now, essentially, you have an almost completely white composition, and it animates there. So you have the stars that push back into space, and it gets really bright and essentially becomes all white. So now it's time to create the warped tunnel. So go to composition, new composition, and we'll call this warp texture. And let's make it 1920 by 1920. So it's going to be a square composition and hit OK. So go ahead and hit command Y to create a new solid. And we'll call this warp texture one and hit OK and drop on a fractal noise effect. And with a fractal noise effect on your layer, go ahead and turn up the contrast to 430 and turn down the brightness to negative 30. And go to the transform drop down menu, deselect uniform scaling, and just kind of turn down the width just a little bit. Essentially, we want it just to be elongated vertically, about like that. And now hold down option and go to offset turbulence and we'll do open square bracket time times negative 500 comma time times 3000 close square bracket and semicolon and click away. So now we have this texture that kind of just pushes down and to the left and let's go to our evolution here. So I'm going to hold down option and hit the stopwatch next to evolution and I'm going to type in time times a thousand and hit semicolon and click away. So that's just going to make this texture even more random as it kind of pushes down and to the right. So now go to your effects and presets browser and type in toner and drop in the CC toner effect. And we're going to change the tone to pin tone and we'll change the brights to just kind of a brighter blue about right there. The midtones we're going to set to just a middle of the road blue. And the dark tones we're going to set to kind of a dark, almost purplish blue, about like that. And go to the effects browser and type in directional blur, drop it onto the layer, and turn up the blur length to 90. Excellent. So now you can see here we have this really cool warped tunnel effect. And if you wanted to, you could go in and turn down the brightness maybe a little bit more just to make it a little darker. And I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate this warp texture. So now we have two warp textures on top of each other. And on this warp texture on top, I'm going to hit U, U, and I'm going to change some of the values here. So the value under the offset turbulence, I'm going to set to negative 90 instead of negative 500. And then instead of 3000 here, we're going to set it to 300. And then I'm going to click away and instead of time, times a thousand for evolution, we're going to do time times a hundred and click away. And so if I solo this, this is essentially a similar layer. It just moves much slower. And this is just going to help our scene look a little more dynamic. So I'm actually going to change the transfer mode of this layer to screen. And I'm going to get rid of this toner effect. So now we have these white shapes in here and it's just adding in another dimension of movement. So I'm going to hit T and just turn the opacity down pretty significantly. Let's say to about 20% and 
and click away. Now that we have our texture created, we're going to create a new composition. So go to Composition, New Composition, and this one we'll call Warp Comp, and we'll change the height back to 1080. So now we just have HD footage and hit OK. So go ahead and drop the warp texture onto the warp comp here. So go to the effects browser and type in CC cylinder and drop it onto the layer. And we're going to set the radius for this cylinder to 40 and go to the rotation here. And we're going to rotate this to where we can see what's going on inside. So I'm going to turn up the rotation of the X here until we can kind of see right down the barrel here. And in fact, we know that that's going to be exactly 90 degrees. Excellent. And let's go to our shading here and we're going to change our ambient to 100, our diffuse to 0, specular to 0, roughness to 0, and metal to 0. So that's just going to make this a little more flat here and I'll zoom in so we can kind of see what's going on. And I'm going to create a new camera just so we can kind of zoom in here. So go to layer new camera and we'll make it 50 millimeter. We can call it camera 1 and go ahead and go over here to our unified camera tool here and go to the track Z camera setting and then just kind of click in and zoom in until the tube kind of takes over the whole frame about like that and now that we're kind of zoomed in here go to your effects and presets browser and type in fast blur and we're trying to basically with this fast blur get rid of some of these harsh lines right here we want to soften those up just a little bit so I'm going to turn this up to about let's say 15 just to soften up kind of some of those edges there and go back to your effects and presets browser and type in curves and drop it onto the layer. And we're just going to create a simple S curve here just to try to kind of emphasize the contrast and go to the effects and presets browser one more time and type in glow and drop it onto the layer. So go ahead and turn up the radius to about 70 and then turn up the threshold to about 40 and click away. So now we have just some brighter white areas here that just have this cool glow effect added to it. And let's go ahead and turn down the intensity a little bit, maybe to about 0.4. So now it's time to animate our camera. So if you remember in our original composition, essentially this tunnel was in the center and it would kind of slowly move to the right over time. So I'm going to move forward to the 10 frame mark and I'm going to go to our drop down menu for our camera here and go to the Y rotation and set a keyframe. And then I'm going to move forward to about two seconds and 10 frames. And I'm going to turn up the rotation of the Y just a little bit to where the tunnel is just kind of on the right side of the frame. So, so now we see this tunnel just kind of warps and spins and slowly pushes to the right. So go ahead and move two frames backwards and set a keyframe for the X rotation and then move two frames forward and we're going to turn up this X rotation to about let's say 45 degrees and you'll notice that the tunnel is off screen so we kind of move forward here to where the tunnel is straight on we can select our track Z camera tool and just kind of push it forward to where whenever it rotates we're looking just at the edge of the tunnel here excellent so now you'll notice that our tunnel kind of has this big black circle in it, but we actually want the tunnel to extend to where the circle is just really small at the very end. So to do that, we're going to have to duplicate this tunnel a couple of times. But before we do that, let's go ahead and select our warp texture. Go up here and select your rectangle tool and just kind of cut out the bottom here. And then set the mask to subtract. Hit F for feather and just kind of feather out the edge. So what this did is just feather out the edge to where we can more smoothly transition from one warp tunnel to the next. So go ahead and duplicate this warp texture, hit S for scale, and go ahead and scale it down. It's right about there, and then drop this one behind the other. And now you'll see it looks like the warp tunnel just extends a little bit further. And I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag it to where we get a completely random seed here. But if we scrub forward, you'll notice that the tunnel begins to offset a little bit. And that's because the way the rotation and the camera is working with the CC cylinder effect with a scaled down layer. So I'm going to go to our first Y rotation keyframe here, hit P for position, and I'm going to move forward to the end of the animation about right here. And I'm just going to click and drag it to where it stays center. So about right there. We'll just go ahead and drag this here. 
and we'll just go ahead and drag this to right about there. And so now if we scrub through, we can see that the warp tunnel in the very center just kind of follows the natural progression of our tunnel, and then it animates off. Cool, so let's go ahead and duplicate this a couple more times and repeat the process. So go ahead and duplicate and scale down the bottom layer. We'll go ahead and offset it. Hit P for position. Go ahead and grab those keyframes to where they line up with the Y rotation keyframes. Scrub to the very last one and we'll just move the position to where it lines up perfectly with the tunnel. And let's do this one more time. Go ahead and duplicate. We'll scale down the bottom layer. We'll have to zoom in here to see what's going on exactly. Center it up in the tunnel here. And then, and let's go ahead and hit P. And we'll just adjust this to where it lines up perfectly with the end of the tunnel. Excellent, so now our warp tunnel is complete. Now it's time to bring it all together. So hit Command N to create a new composition. We'll call this Final Comp and hit OK. So go up here to the project panel and drop down the light jump composition. And remember this is the one that has the stars and they push away. And let's find the point that we wanna transition at. So let's say about one second and yeah, 10 frames and drop down the warp comp. We can go ahead and just drop this down to where it lines up perfectly here with that transition point. And let's create a new adjustment layer. So go to layer, new adjustment layer. And let's drop in a glow effect to the adjustment layer. And we have a little bit of work to do here because essentially we want to mask this transition point. So go ahead and change the glow threshold to about 10. And we're going to change the radius to about 500. So now the whole frame is kind of filled with light here. And go ahead and set a keyframe at the exact point where the warp comp pops up and change the intensity to 4. So now the whole frame should be this bright white. And move forward, not very far, we're going to say about to the 2 second mark here and change the intensity to 0. So now you can see we have this bright transition that kind of slowly fades into the tunnel. So go ahead and scrub forward a few frames before the transition point, and we're going to set the glow intensity to zero again. There you go. So now the stars kind of push back, they get brighter, and then push into a warp tunnel. So if you hit U, you can see all these keyframes here, and we can just drag them and customize them as we see fit. Excellent. So that's how to create the effect. Now it's time to push it over the top. So let's go back to our project panel here. And I'm going to use a clip from our radium pack here at rocketstock.com. And if you're not already familiar with radium, radium is an exclusive pack of 124 K lens flare elements. All of these elements were shot in camera. So they have that nice organic lens flare look that you really just don't get with third party plugins. So let's drop the clip into the composition. I'm going to drop the clip above everything else. And then I'm going to make sure it lines up kind of perfectly with the edge of our warp comp and change the transfer mode to screen. So now we can see that it animated on and there are a few lens flare elements just along the outer portion of the frame here. Excellent. So that's about it. If you want to learn more about radium, go check out the pack over at rocketstock.com. With over 124K assets, there's never been an organic lens flare pack quite like it. Again, don't forget to download the free project file over at rocketstock.com. This has been Caleb Ward, and may the force be with you.